Biomechanics is the study of mechanical laws related to the movement or structure of living organisms. Biomechanics is the impacts of internal forces produced by muscles and the external forces that act on the body. A soccer free kick is given if an opponent commits a foul or participates in unsportsmanlike behaviour. A direct free kick, which is explored in this analysis, is when you are able to directly score a goal from the kick. It is clear that Ronaldo's technique is different to mine in many ways. As shown in the video, you can see that Ronaldo has a three step run up compared to myself having a five step. Although we have a difference in approach lengths, the outcome will be the same as the approach phase generates general motion, which is the first part of momentum, which is transferred into the ball, contributing to the increased velocity that the ball travels in. Ronaldo and I both place our left foot next to the ball when striking. He has a wider base of support than what I have as he lunges further forward onto his left foot. This creates a lower centre of gravity, allowing for greater stability and balance. To improve my centre of gravity, I have to ensure my upper body is over the top of the ball, although it still needs to be within my base of support to be stable. You can also see that both Ronaldo and I use our arms slightly to create a greater balance. As you step forwards, your upper body and torso shift outside your base of support in the direction of travel towards the ball, making you unbalanced. Therefore, to counteract this movement, the left arm is lifted to counteract the shift in your centre of gravity to re-establish equilibrium. As shown in the photo, you can see that I strike the ball too close to the centre, therefore causing it not to lift into the air like Ronaldo's. He strikes the ball slightly lower, giving it the lift it needs to get over the wall and dip back down. This creates topspin. The contact point that occurs creates the topspin. A topspinning ball contributes to an increase in velocity on the downwards phase in its trajectory. This causes the ball to dip as it moves it from a high pressure in the air to a low pressure. As seen in the video, it is evident that Ronaldo crosses his body with his follow-through leg to create the curve on the ball. In the sequential force summation diagram, you can see that Ronaldo has a very fluent and precise movement when striking the ball. He starts with the larger muscle groups first, including his torso, hips and quads, before moving down to his calves and ankles when making contact with the ball. This creates the optimal amount of force required. Compared to Ronaldo, my timing is the same, with technique being slightly different, as I don't strike the ball in the correct spot. To improve this, I need to angle my run up slightly and focus on the position of contact on the ball. Renato and I both re-establish our base of support as once the follow through leg has been completed, both feet are placed back on the ground, realigning our centre of gravity inside the base of support to ensure a successful execution. In soccer free kick, you're aiming for more horizontal force to get the ball into the goal. As you can see, Renato's angle of release is 49 degrees, which allows him to get over the wall and into the goal compared to mine being 24, which is a lot lower, resulting in myself not being able to get the ball over the wall. This is because I am leaning back, which impacts the amount of horizontal force I am generating, as my body is angling vertically. Biomechanics in sport refers to the study and analysis of sporting techniques. Velocity is the speed the ball is travelling in a direction. It is the rate at which the object changes position. The more force applied to the ball, the higher the velocity and the more momentum it will have. Motion is created throughout the motor program of a free kick where all types of motion are present. In the video you can see that all parts of the body are moving together creating general motion. General motion is a combination of linear and angular motion. This occurs in the approach phase of the free kick. Linear motion occurs when stepping to strike the ball where angular motion is occurring in the hips, knees and ankles as they rotate around the same axis creating a circular movement. Once the approach phase is completed, you plant your left foot next to the ball. This general motion is creating momentum. An object in motion has momentum. Velocity and mass are directly proportional to the momentum. Therefore, an increase in velocity will result in more momentum being created and the ball will travel further. Movement or motion involves a force being applied and a change in both position and time. Motion is occurring due to the application of an unbalanced force within the body. To generate force, some description must be applied to the ball. The foot when striking the ball is an unbalanced force as there is no equal force to cancel out the strike. Once the ball is hit with the unbalanced force, the velocity of the ball will be greater than zero as it is now moving, therefore an increase in velocity. Establishing a base of support when planting the left foot next to the base of support helps to balance. Ronaldo's centre of gravity is shifting forwards in the direction of travel outside his base of support. This shift in gravity when outside the base of support contributes to the transfer of momentum onto the soccer ball which promotes an increase in velocity. Because of the base of support is so small and you're shifting your centre of gravity outside, you have to lift your left arm to counteract this shift, allowing you to maintain stable throughout the kicking motion. 
Sequential force summation is the transfer of force from one muscle group to another to achieve the optimal force. As seen in the diagram, the torso moves first, followed by the hips, before being the force being transferred into the hamstring, quads, calves and ankles before striking the ball. If done out of order or the movement isn't done in the optimal time, the optimal force and momentum won't be reached, meaning that the ball won't go over the wall. Optimal force is created through the selective recruitment of force summation. Force summation sequentially aligns the contractions of muscles to generate optimal force. Selective recruitment selects fast and slow twitch muscles for the desired movement. The larger, stronger muscles move first, transferring from one body part to the next, followed by the smaller muscle group so the transfer of momentum is achieved. Newton's second law relates to the velocity change, which is also known as the acceleration. The velocity of the ball changes when struck by the unbalanced force. The acceleration of the ball is inversely proportional to the mass. Once you have passed on the momentum from the large muscle groups, it has to stabilise so that the next muscle group can activate. When striking the ball, Newton's first law states that the object at rest will stay at rest unless acted upon by the unbalanced force. For a soccer free kick, the ball will stay at rest unless acted upon by this force. To overcome inertia, Force needs to be applied to the stationary ball once the optimal level of force has been applied through the application of forces, the ball will overcome inertia. The leg in a soccer free kick is acting as a third class lever when coming into contact with the ball. The point of contact occurs when the foot reaches the ball. The full extension of the leg creates a longer lever where more speed is generated at the point of contact because it has to travel a greater distance in the same amount of time period as all the other muscles that rotate around the same axis points of the hips and knees. This generates more force and momentum being transferred onto the ball, increasing the overall velocity. Impact occurs when coming into contact with the ball. Elasticity is the ball's ability to compress when the foot comes into contact, hugging and rebounding it back to its initial state, this allowing it to move in a forward momentum. The ball's ability to return to its initial state is called restitution. The harder the object, the more rebound energy it will have propelling it further. As a soccer ball isn't tight and has give, it isn't able to reach far distances. Once you have passed on the momentum from the large muscle groups, it has to stabilise so that the next muscle group can activate. Once all three stages of soccer free kick are completed, Ronaldo and I both re-establish our base support so that we don't fall over. This is done by placing both feet back onto the ground, realigning the centre of gravity inside the base of support. In a soccer free kick, the ball has to start stationary on the ground before the foot comes into contact where the ball will lift into the air and go over the wall and dip before reaching the goals in order to score. Ball one struck when in the flight is a projectile. Projectile motion is an object once released which follows a predetermined parabolic path that can only be affected by gravity and air resistance. A projectile path is a curved line when traced through the air from release to falling where gravity affects the acceleration of the ball. When the ball is in the upwards phase of the parabolic path, the force of gravity is slowing or decelerating the ball until it reaches its peak. When the ball begins to fall, the motion accelerates. This explains why the ball dips over, passing the wall. When the projectile moves through the air, drag pulls against the velocity direction, therefore slowing the projectile's velocity. Air resistance is an external force that changes the projectile's flight path. As the front of the ball pushes through the air, the molecules will create drag, resulting in the ball falling to the ground. In order to overcome air resistance and drag, I need to strike the ball with enough force to reach the goal at a high velocity. The spin is created from the oncoming air, which causes the ball to be pushed down. As the ball goes from a high pressure to a low pressure, the ball accelerates towards the ground, and this allows for the ball to dip faster. Angle of release is one of the most important parts of a soccer free kick, to be able to get the ball over the wall and into the goal. The optimal angle of release is no larger than 45 degrees. With the angle of release smaller than 45 degrees, it will allow the ball to clear the wall and end in the goal with the effects of gravity, air resistance and spin. Speed of release on the ball is affected by the velocity created before striking the ball. The speed of the soccer ball when leaving the ground will impact on distance. Speed of contact and angle of release relates to... Newton's third law which states that every action has an equal and opposite reaction. In a soccer free kick, my foot exerts a force onto the ball when striking. When this force is applied, the ball equals the same amount of force pushing back with an equal but opposite force. Through the application of biomechanical principles when analysing Ronaldo's technique to mind, gaining an understanding of the best performance, creating optimal velocity and the best route for projectile flight, I've been able to improve my soccer free kick.